Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Hope you didn't miss us. Coffee with Mirko is live. Episode number 10 on this beautiful day in Melbourne. So without further ado, let's brew some coffee. Uh, pretty much ready to go. Just need to weigh it in. Pour some water. And let me tell you who we got today. Today, my beautiful cheap kettle, uh, today we're going to have the luck and luxury to interview Alberto. Alberto is the owner and founder of Tostato Specialty Coffees, uh, which is uh, located in Brescia, uh, in Italy. So I met Alberto a few years back, back when I was in Italy, and I was very intrigued on how he started, especially coffee shop only, with a very, very intriguing coffee menu uh, in Italy, which is a country renowned for their traditional, bitter, uh, robusta type of coffee. And he explained to me that basically his father had a, um, a roastery and uh, he learned how to roast the classic style, and then he's gonna tell us more about the story, but long story short from what he told me is that he got so much passion for coffee after visiting an expo, and he started questioning how to roast differently to get more of those flavors that he was looking for. So his passion for specialty is huge. His shop is amazing. I'm very excited to have him on board. He's already requesting. So I'll accept that, Alberto, in one second. Let me plunge so that I can sit with you. But yeah, guys, so his passion for coffee is amazing, but he's also an amazing guy, full of personality, and we just, we're just going to have a good time. So tag along, and we're going to be seeing, meeting him again very soon. And in the meantime, I hope you're all safe. Hope you're well. Hope that you're doing well with quarantine and hopefully Alberto has some coffee for himself. We're going to ask him soon and apparently he's already actually in the shop so he might give us a bit tour where he's at now and I think it's time. A slow plunge for myself, I prefer. Uh, some people go faster, some will do reverse aeropress. I just prefer a slow plunge. It's all about slow life. Um, so anyway, before we get into the interview, please remember you can always ask questions. If we don't answer straight away, we'll keep them for the Q&A. If you're enjoying the show, please share, recommend, tag friends who would love to see this. We also turn in these into YouTube videos for a recap, as well as a podcast, including some of my personal keynotes. So Coffee with Mirko is about to start. Ah, uh, that moment when the coffee's ready. So, coffee's ready. Alberto is here. Let's go. Okay. Woo! Hey, Alberto! <laughs> Ciao, Mirko! Ciao, how are you? I'm good, and you, how are you doing? Good. It's good to see you, man. Um, uh, it's great to speak with you. It's a long time. It's, it's been a few years since the last time I visited you at the shop, and uh, lots of things has happened. But uh, first thing, I love the mustache. Yeah, the typical have Italian mustache. I get it. And uh, tell us, how are you with the pandemic and everything? Oh, guys, such a bad, bad situation we, we went through. Uh, actually, we are looking for when and out, so, so for coming out. Actually, we are one of the three or the North Italian, or North Italian city uh, most, uh, most contagious. Uh, actually, for our business and for uh, our city was a big mess. But, but you have to know, and I'm pretty sure that you know that, in this city, uh, during the years, in the past, it's pretty well known what the industries and the and the, the tough of the people. So we are we are not giving up. 
we are keeping keeping it real instead of this uh, this bad situation we try to to make our best so many of ours start delivering start uh, to do what what the, the law allowed us to do because you know as you know the lockdown uh, bring us at home and our kind of shops and our kind of business it's completely the last that will open definitely yeah. for the people yeah i guess um i feel for you i visited uh, i i have experienced the pandemic uh it, Find that because of my family still back home in Italy, so of course, uh, um, you know, I've been following the news. Uh, I've seen Brescia as well as Bergamo and yeah. Milan have been uh, uh, heavily impacted. So, but the number one thing is uh, the health. Um, yeah. As long as you and uh, your loved ones are well, uh, things are good. Uh, yeah. Things are things are for the best. And as far as business, I'm sure you're gonna get back on your feet because you're full of yeah. energy and yeah, yeah we, are. we are tough man i mean you know this situation in many cases gives us the chance to re re review and review our core businesses uh, in particular not talking about tostato because as you know and as of all your followers knows the specialty coffee market is pretty in growing so lots of place are preferred by the classic bars and coffee shops because their, their quality in their passion, their knowledge and other stuff who, who is in a specialty coffee shop all around the world. So we are not, I mean, in, in, in a situation to, 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 to ask ourselves what we, what we will be, actually. So we know pretty well that our core business is strong. Our product will be, I mean, the, strong enough to survive, but obviously... If you do a kind of a kind of job as a classic Italian bar or a classic bar, that's gonna be a big mess because new rules will allow us to serve a short people. We have to decrease the place inside of the coffee shop, but as you know, Tostato is a pretty large space, so there's not too crowded people sit. So we can dispatch in a in a, another way. So we are Good to looking, hear. we are looking for review a little bit to take a chance for stay at home with our families to think about you know brainstorming yeah. in this situation are the best and kick takes out from us all the best so well I, will, said. I, will, I will just wait and keep pushing the delivering that is going great actually I and, see I uh, see you going around yeah I see yeah, you in the stories in Australia are pretty I mean pretty involved in delivering and what's I mean what's e-commerce bring to home to the people as you know Italy is pretty well known in the world for uh, engaging people for trying to stay close for leaving the bar as the third place between home and work have you have you thought um, this is just an idea out of the box um, more because we're talking without really following uh, we get into the questions later but something that you could do maybe because i get the culture of italy um especially with your very close customers your regular yeah. customers have you thought about maybe you already done it but um, to literally set a time and have a cafe a coffee on zoom all together yeah, you know we did yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very good did, and actually the very first days of quarantine bring us to take obviously the the, the, the first uh, the first aid kit for our customers so we're uh, staying with them teaching them how to make a good mocha pot teaching them how to grind better coffee maybe at home without a grinder so nice um, skills that they can bring them back at their place without us that tell them and obviously, uh, some suggest about which coffee at the supermarket choose, because as you know, the specialty coffee market is a, a pretty small batch of places. And many of that cases, they do not do delivering or they do, but the volume are really, really not critical um, as, as a, a commercial grocer. So just teaching them which coffee to choose, which is the best in commerce, just, just a good friends that keep you high. As I, as I can say, uh, that's, that's the, the very first thing we did in the very first days of quarantine. 
After that, we, do, we, we, we start to do some live chats with uh, our partners, as a Faema, Chimbali. We did something good with, uh, with our trainer on the Mumak Academy. So trying to do some storytelling as well. But after that, That's beautiful. after passing three weeks, uh, something has to change for us and we start to do the delivering. But uh, as, you, as you know, delivering coffee is uh, one of the hardest things in the uh, food and beverage sector. Yes. <laughs> so we, we, try to, we try to, I mean, to explain to our customers that it's going to order, order from our uh, delivering uh, that obviously some drinks they could not have it at home because the distance is too much. But we had a genius idea that I can suggest to our owners of coffee shops that maybe are feeling this crisis and they can they can see a way out of this inferno. One of the greatest things that you can do is and to create a closers club. What do you say? What I what I'm saying. All days I'm here in a coffee shop, as you can see, I'm in Tostato right now. So I I'm can here see that. working. I'm here to roast, uh, to prepare the orders, to dispatch all around the city. But the customers who live close to us, who, are, who comes to our shop every single day because they live just two blocks, bef two blocks uh, before us or in the closest area, why don't we continue to do this kind of services at home in delivering, but serving as well the that drinks that really sensible to 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 deliver and to and, and to take to the to the people? I'm 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 more precise. In this closers club, we we define an area around to start about two kilometers, and all the people that find themselves in that area can obviously order a cappuccino, a double espresso, a flat white, a filter coffee. So the distance makes us in a, in a position to, to deliver in cold, uh, not cold, but hot. Obviously, Got you. it's a big mess because you don't engage a lot of money and you do a lot, a lot, a lot of... Kilometers, I got but you. That's it. We must keep in contact. We must keep in touch with our customers. You to, you, you're doing the right thing. You're engineering your business. You're introducing something new to the community, something that's not super popular in Italy in any way. And, you know, this is what, you know, every business should be doing if they can. Uh, first, obviously, is health. Second is safety. Third is if you can save the jobs of your employees. But ultimately, it's to reinvent and uh, re-engineer. And, you know, some businesses, you know, th they all have the opportunities to take advantage of uh, yeah. technology, social media, and all sorts of things. So most businesses can reinvent themselves. And we can even see some amazing initiatives like Ferrari uh, or, or the big guys, you know, creating yeah masks or or the respirators ventilators motors yeah. and all of those things so i think businesses are doing that and i think more and more initiatives will, will, will be needed for sure yeah as fast as you change and as fast as you can uh, like a chameleon uh, as, yeah. you, as fast as you can control your core business and focus on which is the right direction to take it in that day because we can't program in a month we have to program ourselves in the day by day. day so by that, day. Yeah. that makes you stronger when you will open. So you will, uh, reach, you will reach what's necessary first. But now it's just a strategy, is a strategy period. So you have to take what, what it comes. And makes what, sense. as you told, social communication is the fact. Now we are at home. We are, do not have nothing to do. We need to take our customer close to us. So invest some money in communication, invest some money in maybe in not paying a person actually, but maybe doing advertising on Facebook, on Instagram. So if you have some batch of money, not much, 10 euro per month, five euro per, 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 per month, what, 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 is, what is it, doesn't matter, invest in social. Because now is the moment. After that, when the quarantine will be finished, when we arrive in a normality, the most, I mean, faster in, in this, in social media managing, will, will, will increase their, their business more yeah. than the others. 
I mean, you know, maybe you don't know what I've been up to, but I, I well, I run a social media agency for coffee shops, yeah, no. cafes, and coffee roasters. So I, 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 I second that. That's uh, paramount, 100%. Now, I'm very concerned. Where's your coffee? Yeah, yeah, it's here. <laughs> I was waiting for you to prepare myself because as I, as I wrote you in a, your live show yesterday, I'm a, I have a, a private double espresso session. So private because I'm alone, so I don't know yeah. wear masks and, and gloves because I'm not preparing, obviously. So now I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just taking my, my time before starting the delivery. And first of all, first of coffee, I want to show you one thing. Obviously, we are in Tostato, but we change some stuff in here as you can see we remove all the tables yeah we set some tables for the delivering part so all the labels uh, stickers and stuff this is a cool stuff it's, we we will present it sooner this is our cold brew concentrated something to 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 send to the delivering we have uh, some remains from the easter period and some merchandise as a chocolate and other stuff and then we will remove all the, our seats and we kept on these babies. Aha, uh -huh. simple roaster. Yeah, as I told you yesterday, in our uh, project of core business in Rene renewal, will be obviously the, 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 the idea of improve and implement what the roastery part is in Tostato. So, Many of our followers doesn't know it, but we actually uh, not roast the coffee for ourselves. We just profile it. What, what does it mean? We buy coffee from farmers. We take it to Tostato. We do some sample roast for profiling, for take the best of the ripeness and juiciness we, that we can from the coffees. And then, obviously, first of all, we are helped by a man that inspired me and helped myself for uh, start my business. And the coffee shop is called His Majesty the Coffee. It's based in Milan. They do great coffee as well. So they, he sent me green, green beans. I try to profile as best as my coffee shop needs and my customers obviously want. And then once we find the right profile, we send it back to Paolo. And Paolo obviously will roast for us the coffee. Gotcha. This is our filier and our, our process. But yeah. obviously, after this situation, we will, we will have the, the we, we have the idea to, to change our spaces because we could not serve too much customers as before. We have to redimension the spaces, tables, keep the distance and other stuff. But obviously, the, the, today, the space that we will lose, we will reuse it and we will reinvest it maybe for our roastery and for get bigger our kitchen. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah we're trying to, to figure out what's, what, what, when, when will be the, the right moment for attack. Because now, obviously, it, it's, it's, it's a crazy idea investing money in this period. It's, uh, it's too, too, too public, it's too crowded, it's too, too, too many stuff that, that, that are not clear. So we are waiting. Just planning and, and seeing what's what's uh, what's gonna what's gonna be actually. I got but you. Now I prepare me an espresso. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for for a few questions for you and yeah, for sure. the people who are gonna watch this and rewatch it. So, well, we start with the usual question for everyone, which is, uh, tell us more about how did you start your coffee journey? Um, yeah. I have I know a little, but. A lot of people who follow may not know your story, but what, what was your journey? It's a family business, actually. I start from the very beginning because when, uh, when I was young, I spent most of my spare time off, uh, off the school or uh, on just a uh, free time in a family roaster. My dad has a roastery here in Brescia. It was actually a big roastery. It, I, it was uh, 3,000 square meters with uh, three private roasters, one Scolari, so actually was an industrial roastery. We served uh, the, the big distributions and vending, obviously, even the automatic and supermarkets and all the formats of coffee that it's more popular in Italy, not special. Then we own uh, different coffee shops all around in, 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 our, in our hometown, 
And what what I where, where I start, where my business idea starts from the very beginning, actually, because coffee in Italy is a culture, but specialty coffee, so and so. People take coffee because they need coffee, and not just because they want. So, as a, a big man, as our Schultz said, coffee is the third place between home and house. And many people think to spend their time to to a coffee shop not for drinking coffee, but for staying together and then drinking coffee. So my idea developed in this. Uh, since when I was really young, I, I used to work with my dad in a roaster. Uh, I, I made, a, I mean, the, not the waiter until the 22 years old. So I stayed in a, in a factory and roasting coffee, open bags, packaging bags, and... What, what the roastery life is. Many of uh, your followers will know. And after that, once I turned 22, 23 years old, I had an experience out of my borders, out of my city, for, as a barista and uh, a snowboard trainer. It's something strange. But yeah. I keep in contact. So I, I did, during the day, I did, the, I did the snowboard coach and teaching. And in the afternoon and in the night, I work as a, as a barista. In this, uh, in this hotel. So something in my mind will turn. Uh, so I, I know the, the, the art of roasting coffee. I know all the filier. I know all the processing. Why I'm doing the snowboard teacher. <laughs> so I get back to my home spot. And I start to, to, to work with my, with my mom. That has a, a coffee shop here in Brescia. My dad went, went, uh, went old. When, I, I don't know what, what's the term in English. Pensione. Uh, he went, uh, re he retired. Yeah, he yeah. retired from work. And I was too young for, uh, for manage all the roastery. I have two brothers, but they do uh, other jobs. And after that, we decided to sell the roastery. And my dad's retiring himself for dedicating hunting uh, and sports and other stuff. But we had a lot, a lot of knowledge. And when, when I, I start to, to bring all my pieces and, and try to, to make a, a, a decision to what to do, I took the, the chance to, to, to take a part of some specialty coffee shops, uh, uh, trainers and, and courses. So I define better what the specialty coffee world is in between the world of coffee that I know before. So the, the tradition. And I mix these two worlds, actually. I mix the tradition of the Italian spare time at the bar with the, the, the most highly culture of specialty coffee shop. But it was really hard at first because the people doesn't even know what's a specialty coffee. Oh, sorry, doesn't even know what's coffee as well. <laughs> even if we are in Italy. <laughs> I get you. And um, in fact, that's... Um... That was my next question. Which, which challenges you had to face introducing specialty coffee in Brescia, which you kind of answered that. Uh, um, and I, I can see how that, you know, it would have been a high, a challenge, but a rewarding experience once you convert a few people. Yesterday I had the privilege to was, you know, I was, um, I was, with uh, Matthew Lowen, not sure if you know him. Um, he's the current Australia barista champion. Um, yeah. he's, um, he works very close with Sasha from Ona. And he's still, you know, one of the sentences that impressed me is like, you know, our job is just to give the people the coffee that they like and want, um, especially in Australia, where is decaf, we gotta give them the best decaf. Where is a, a latte with two sugars, it's gotta be the best latte with two sugars. And That's it. I think if we remove price, because I think that's probably your biggest challenge in Italy, if we remove yeah. price of the menu, your concept is similar to that, to give them the best possible coffee based on their order. They want espresso, I want to give them the best espresso possible in, in, in the best way possible, which is fantastic. We, aside from pricing, what else did you find difficult at the beginning? Because you had a shop for a few years now. Yeah, it's two years now that, I, that I'm managing to start. And, and what, as, as, I, as you told before, the most important part is to give people what they want. 
And the first of all, the people there inside of your coffee shop are there because they want your product. So you don't have to get mad to, oh my God, what, what, I, what I'm going to serve him because he wants a latte extremely hot with a, hey, slow down. Customers went inside of your coffee shop because he wants your coffee. So you have to manage his, your culture, obviously not, not boring people's, but trying to figure out what's your skills to serving, what's the market best have, and obviously giving what you want. So I respect people who put sugar in coffee. I respect people who want extremely hot coffee because they are free. There's no rule. So the rule is I want to get in, I want to drink a good coffee, and I want to continue to do what I'm doing. I don't, want, I don't want to be bored by the barista because I asked him a hot cappuccino and he said, oh, no, hot cappuccino, I can make it because the temperature is 65 degrees. Come on, come on. Stop, stop. Respect what the skills teach you. Respect what world of coffee, of the specialty coffee teach you, but not bore the people. The people need to feel at home, need to feel friendly with you, and need to trust in you. And that's the second part of your question prices obviously the prices of a specialty coffee is higher than a classic espresso in, it in italy but the italian are not stupid i mean if you serve to a, a man a great espresso and you teach him how to you know discover the difference between a specialty or a classic bar he will trust on you for his entire life you're italian you know if someone trying to offer you something and you're not sure about what he's doing, but you discover that that man is taking care of you, so it's not a fake, you will trust on him for the entire of your life because you're Italian. It's, it's typical for us. We love to engage people. We love to love and, and keep in... Keeping, um, and so we also we, we also like high quality products, and you know we 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 artisans and handcrafts uh, from fashion yeah. to automobiles. So uh, I think it's time for people to understand that just as much as they can go a Fiat, they can yeah. buy a higher caliber car. It's the same with coffee, um, but I think that probably. It would be great if that gap would be smaller, yeah. uh, but you know we'll we'll see what happens after the pandemic. Because I think that I remember the conversation that we had a few years back on how the pricing that you have over there, especially. And I'm not here yeah. to, uh, you know, I'm actually going to have uh, it's a big reveal, but Ruben Gardelli and Francesco Sanapo are going to join the show in the next couple of weeks. So yeah. I know, you know. You probably know them in person, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the good people. And um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to them about it because it's incredible the difference between the cost of a kilo of specialty coffee in Australia compared to Italy, consider yeah. that in Australia, we consider Australia a little bit better than Italy as far as money goes. Mm -hmm. The average salary is a little bit higher, yeah. and uh, and most things in Australia are a little bit more expensive than Italy. Funny how the specialty coffee is Less. the opposite. It's cheaper here because there's a higher demand, and it's more expensive in Italy because demand is not as high, which is interesting. Yeah, obviously uh, so, the supply chain can can can't be the the the, the, the reason. Because as you know, the green coffee costs really, really low prices. So the Divarius is unbelievable. When I manage, when I roast for my dad's roastery, we buy coffees that obviously cost much and coffee that costs less. Because the people at the bar, maybe the, uh, an owner of a coffee shop just wants the label. It doesn't mean which coffee is inside. Just want yeah. the label. That's my and mom. That's and that allowed, that allowed all the roasters to make their price. So when they figured out with the specialty coffee and they discover that the raw material in between the uh, classic and an economy coffee cost 
three, three times more, <laughs> obviously, oh, I can do more money. And they spin the prices. As it's right, it is, obviously. I'm not saying that they, we are thief or we're doing robbery. It's just because the commercial coffee costs too low. And for us, importing small batches of specialty coffee costs too much. Yeah. What is we that? see, that's right. And what we see, especially here in Melbourne, I mean, and I don't want to make names because uh, uh, for legal reasons, but... I have seen in my career in coffee, especially when I was working for a coffee roaster, I have seen wholesale price, so price for a coffee shop owner, okay? I have seen a good blend, no single origin, a specialty yeah. grade blend, as low as 20 Australia dollars, which is about 16, 16, euro. 16 euro for a kilo of good a good coffee. Um, and if the shop does 30, 40, 50 kilos of coffee a week, they always include, they always include a, a coffee machine with a special price. So it's crazy to hear the prices that are in Italy in special coffee, but I understand why. Now, moving to the next question. Yeah. Because you've been in, you know, in Tostato for two years and you're near Milan, which, you know, Milan is a little bit innovative uh, yeah, sure. for the next thing. Can you see, and I'm going to ask the same question to Francesco Rubens, so no pressure, but can you see Italy to ever, maybe not switch fully, but to lessen the gap and go more specialty, towards more specialty coffee, or at least having more... Uh, you know, the volume of specialty coffee roasters would, would it grow. Do you see that happen in the next five, ten years? Um, actually, thinking about the, the, the bars and our, our core business since So after this hit of pandemic and COVID and other stuff, obviously we, we must choose. And in my opinion, in the very next five or ten years, it will start to be actually the bar for me for my opinion because if you run a classic bar it's a disaster because if just a coffee shop as mine or as a thousand of specialty coffee there in europe open close to that it's shut <laughs> if you think about the core businessing and the power and the engaging of that a specialty coffee shop has in between an italian bar it's the divarius is enormous is a, is a, I, can, I can explain it uh, with an example. For example, if you produce the most beautiful chocolate in your life and you sell it as an artisan and you open a shop close to uh, one of the most popular chocolate brands that I obviously made a commercial chocolate and one guy of that town came into your coffee shop and tasted it, it came into your chocolate shop and taste your chocolate and discover it's better than the other, in two years, you will increase your shop and probably the commercial one will shut. So people love artisans. People love quality. People love kilometer zero. People love to speak with the people who made their dishes, clothes, products. So in this, if just because we are Italian and we are especially artisans, manufacturers. Our, our life teaches us that we work with, with hands and create best that the world must have. This, in, especially in the coffee sector, will be actually the, probably the, the renaissance. Uh, as someone the said. renaissance, I like that. I think um, maybe, you know, I, I'm going to add, I'm going to spin that a little bit for you. What I think that your power and secret weapon can be actually service and the people as well. And I'll tell you why. And I was, I was talking about this with Matt yesterday, Matt Lowen. Um, in Australia, especially in Melbourne, a lot of the baristas, they put so much focus on the jug, the shot, the coffee. Basically, their eyes are always at this angle. Yeah. 
And every time that there is a little bit of a contrast and uh, a little bit because there's a lot of different cultures here. You know, we have baristas from all over the world, from yeah. United States to South Korea to India to England to Germany, right? Um, and that has different cultures of different ways to deal with people. And what I find is that sometimes when there is a little complaint, not every barista can handle that complaint in the same way as everybody yeah. else's. So I think that when you provide, uh, you know, it's like if you go to, we shouldn't name brands, but, you know, if, if you go to a luxury car dealership, okay, it, it's the full experience, you know, they give you maybe a glass of Prosecco, they, they give you maybe a special chair to sit on, and basically yeah. from the entry to the showroom, to the drive test, the experience and the level of service, it's at as high as the yeah. quality of the product. Customer caring. Correct. When here I feel we lack of that still. Not everywhere, but here sometimes the service is lower than the quality of the product. Yeah. Because the quality of the product is high in a lot of coffee shop. Because yeah. The word specialty here is a joke. It's a bit funny because pretty much everyone serves specialty coffee if you come to Melbourne. Yeah. It's very, very difficult to have a bad coffee. Yeah. It's very difficult. And if you have a bad coffee, it's because of how it was made and not because of the coffee in the bag. That's it. So it's very interesting. And uh, I'm going to have more conversations like this with other people from Australia who will, I will try to ask them why it's this. My grandfather teach me one thing, one important thing. A coffee shop is made by 60% of the layout and the 40% of the barista. But when I, when I listened to my father, my grandfather, I asked him about the product and he, he answered me with this. He said, the product, if you can't can get in, how you know the product is good? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so the product is your business card. Because you know that you have the best. But if the yeah. people can, don't get in, you have the best product, but the coffee shop is empty. <laughs> and that's exactly right. So I think your spirit and your level of service that I've experienced when I came to start a couple of years ago. Um, no, it's true. Not because you're here. I, be, I talked. I've talked. Sorry. So, sorry, Please. just a second. Please. We possiamo. Sì, però devi chiamarci di farci l'ordine. Sì, this is real life. Yeah. This is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, because this, please. Yeah, actually there's, there's a big fact. In, in these days, we are here inside to work, and the people who pass by obviously ask if they can have a coffee. But the law doesn't allow us to serve in taking away. We're just doing delivery, so... <laughs> You're going to hate me, but in Australia, you can still get takeaway coffee. Here. Ah, yeah. Uh, you're lucky, guys. I don't because I only drink espresso, so I don't like it in a takeaway cup. I like the experience, uh, but yeah. So, and not because you're here live, but I spoke about Tostato to a lot of people here in the past few years, you know, show them, I've shown them your shop, show them your Instagram. Your level of enthusiasm and passion really will help define and shape specialty in Italy, you know? Matt said the same thing yesterday about Australia and the specialty coffee in general is made from people. You know, you think about the big masters and the big mentors, the big gurus, you know, the top Australian people, you know, you think about Toby Smith, you think about uh, uh, Mark Dundon, you think about Sasha, you think about yeah. all these big, big people. And they've influenced other people who influence other people and eventually all get together. So I think, I really hope that by the time I move back to Italy, specialty will be more and more popular. Um, yeah. So next question for you is, do you prefer roasting, staying behind the coffee machine or the front of the shop? Pardon, sorry, sorry. I, I just uh, listened to the first part of the question. Can you well, what do you prefer? Do you prefer roasting 
beyond the staying beyond the coffee machine or being at the shop in the front line? Actually, uh, it's a good question. I do prefer roasting. Actually, I love my job. I love the barista job. But uh, as, as I love my work, as I love my passion, as I love my job, roasting makes me in a position in a position to study being a barista makes me in a position to do not have time for study and these two situations obviously uh, are all necessary it's all need but i do prefer roasting <laughs> okay that's cool that's cool i think then uh, uh if roasting is uh is your passion uh, eventually when you yeah, expand the business that. you'll be able to roast in the shop yeah, sure. I, I, will, I, I definitely try and I will try to improve myself as better as I can. But I spend actually all my summer, summer school breaks since when I was nine years old until 20 years old in a roastery. So coffee went out of my ears. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, good, good. That's good. And um, all right, so... Tostato is where you're at now, and yeah. uh, for the people who don't know, Tostato means roasted, uh, which yeah. is, uh, you know, it, we, uh, I think we should have said that earlier. Um, what's, what's your secret? What, what, made you, what makes you wake up in the morning and say, let's go? I mean, aside from this period, but what was your secret that pushed yourself towards a successful business? Because you can even tell us how hard it was with the process of planning and starting your own business. People need to understand that. And in Italy, it's harder than any, any situation for bureaucracy. What's, what's, what's my Kickstarter? Actually, I, I think positive. I love my job. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nervous guy, actually, because uh, I continue to think to improve, uh, to think what's, what's next will be, what new investments to do. I try to, to train my mind every single day in my, in my business. The secret is to love what you do and deserve time for what you love. And if what you love is what you do, deserve all the time that you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, yes. And then another, another one, another one, and as a, as, a, as a suggestion that I give to all the baristas of the world, smile. Because these let the people smile. And if you smile, at even the, the most rude customer that you have will, will, will don't understand that. And obviously, you will, you, you will find himself in a, in a critical situation to say, I'm the, the, the most rude customers in the world, but this guy is so, he's so cute. I can't, <laughs> I can't be rude. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, I think that's, that's a very, very big advice. And uh, I, I actually, when I used to train baristas or the trials or people who would start to work in the cafe I used to manage, um, Part of the training was to say hello and good morning, um, and 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 when the, when I would ask them to say, can you please say hello, or good morning, or whatever, they they, they were very, oh, what do you it's mean? The first thing. Uh, guy, there's a study who who test that after when I, when a man get inside your shop after seven seconds. If you do not say hi to him or if you do not consider him, he will have, for first, a bad experience. So it's harder to change that mindset that the customer has because you do not have time to say hi. It's the, it's the most yeah. stupid things that a barista can, can't not do. Yeah, I, 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 I absolutely agree. And look, before I read one question that's not being sent through because we're opening the Q&A, I think we're gonna go past the hour, but let's see how we go. Um, we got a few, a few things here. But look, here's a, here's a, here's a cash, and there's a little story to confirm what you said. I once went into a shop in Melbourne, and it's one of the most beautiful shops. 
with, I don't want to say the name. Their coffee, their roasting style is amazing. And I went inside and um, as I was there, nobody acknowledged me for more than a minute. And I, I it, it I, was, I, yeah. And the problem is that because there's so many other good coffee shops around, it was yeah. very easy for me to book out. So I get what you say. Uh, Nabin, um, thank you for the question. He's asking how you calibration in your coffee shop. I think the question is, is uh, I, think, I think his question is trying to ask what's your calibration in your coffee shop with your coffee? Um, do, you, do you mean for espresso shot? Probably yes. espresso, that's a question probably. I mean, we actually do not work with a, with a dark roast. We generally work with an omni roast for espresso and light roast for uh, filter coffees. So in this case, I not, do not have to use a, a high brew ratio. So in general, Italians do not love too much acidity. So we're trying to take this Coca Riva Brazilian coffee from Paolo Simone, from His Majesty the Coffee, and trying to, to figure in a profile that allowed to, allowed to have a body and some bright but really, really fine acidity. Not that much. Mm -hmm. So the brew ratio for this natural yellow Katuai Brazil is actually 17 grams in for 30 grams out. Around there. Okay. 17. And that's for single shot or double? That's just the same. I'm talking about double shot. I'm talking about double, double. shot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, for the single shot, as you know, in Italy, generally most of the or most of barista use the single porta filter. We do not use it. We try to use a, just a double shot and, okay. and trying to. <laughs> we try to develop a single porta filter with a Faema and Gruppo Cimbali and EMS. It is uh, actually one of the most uh, famous uh, uh, firm who produce filters. Roberto, for sorry for interrupting you. A gentleman said, his name is Francesco Sanapo. I think you know him. <laughs> He said, no one loves the high acidity in the espresso. <laughs> <laughs> Grazie, Francesco. <laughs> but is it, is it true? But not at all. Because many of our customers, when they find what's the real acidity in a single, a single origin coffee or in a single espresso is, they just go, went through and said, okay, please give me the highest coffee that you have. <laughs> Because yeah. acidity is a, is, is a fact that if you, if, you, if you develop it during roasting, it, it, it combines with sweetness and, and gives uh, the, the, ripest, the, the, the ripest fruit that, uh, that a beans can give. I was, uh, was reading uh, um, two months ago a Raymond Fail book, uh, Roasting, Coffee, Roasting Coffee Made It Simple. It's a book that made uh, these guys... He said, I read this, uh, this, this, this phrase this was really, really good. He said, there's no way to, to, to say that one coffee is well roasted or unroasted. Coffee is uh, like a fruit. When you eat a fruit, you love it because it is, it is ripe. So in its ripeness, it gives what's the best that fruit can give. You, you do not love an, an unripe fruit. So you do not love an unripe apple. You do not love an unripe strawberry. Coffee is a fruit. So when you roast it, you need to, to let, it, let it become the ripest fruit that you can. Obviously, the, the Fran Francesco is right. No one loves the And you have to, obviously, in, in between the coffee you're roasting, profiling it as the best, obviously, that coffee can give. It, it's interesting, it's interesting, because uh, um, I think my mom would say, and, and I think this applies to coffee, my mom would say the gustibus, you know, like in terms of different palates, because, for example, as a kid, I used to pick non-ripe plums because I love the acidity of the fruit. Yeah. And in fact, for me... On my personal coffee journey, because I didn't drink coffee in Italy, I started drinking very high quality coffee in Australia when I was with the right mentors. And I was lucky, very lucky and privileged to drink some very good 90 plus 
coffee, oh, yeah. unreal. And, um, and um, the acidity and the fruitness is what I look for even on an espresso. So it's very interesting. Uh, for me, give me all the acidity in the world and I'm happy. But Francesco is right in terms of a lot of people love acidity, especially back in Italia. Now, yeah, sorry, just give me a second, please. Please, second. you got customer. Se vai sulla nostra pagina, ho capito, ma noi non serviamo giorno per il giorno. Tu devi fare l'ordine il giorno prima e noi serviamo il giorno dopo. Io sono in una diretta Instagram in questo momento e non riesco a risponderti. Incredibile. <ride> eh, io, è una cliente che mm, eh, viene spessissimo e eh, probabilmente non ha letto bene il cartello fuori. E, eh. È così, c'è un po' di tensione nell'aria. <ride> It's okay. Guarda, it's, uh, I think that, yeah, look, because she can rewatch the review, well, the, 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 the replay, it's all right. Look, I, it's, I get it. Some people are more or less frustrated. Um, yeah. I, it's, look, yeah, obviously there's the, a, delivering, the delivering works with, with times and obviously we take orders, yeah, but when we are packed, course. we can do as much as, uh, as, we, as no. we can, obviously. Before, before I read uh, Nabin's second question, which is go more towards filter coffee, uh, I mean, Francesco sum, sum it up perfectly. Yes, that's the harmony between every characteristic of an espresso, acidity plus sweetness plus bitterness and texture. All together, create an espresso. Yeah. Francesco, you are, you are a poet, un poeta. <laughs> un poeta. Uh, <laughs> Francesco è un poeta, un filosofo, eh? guarda che... Filosofo, è... even better. Lui ce ne ha sempre um, una, eh? Eh, uh, we know him. He's coming here too, so I'm very excited to meet him. Ed è anche molto geloso, eh? perché se non bevi i suoi caffè poi dopo si offende. Eh, I'm 16,000 km away from him, so uh, it's difficult for me, but... Uh, Francesco doesn't know that we got a mutual, few mutual friends in Australia. We'll, we'll, we'll find them out when he comes in alive. Uh, yeah. Going back on the question of Nabin, can yeah. you tell me about filter paper coffee, what you serve in your coffee shop, like about ratio and preparation methods? So I think he's referring to what's your recipe and ratio? Let's call it for a V60. Let's just yeah. state. It obviously changes in between the coffee and the beans you, change, you choose. Even, even if it's an hard bean or a soft bean, even if it's in a high altitude coffee or a low altitude coffee, if it's a natural process or a washed process. So it changes the ratio. In general, for the natural coffees, we use a, a less brew ratio because they are more consistent. For the washed coffee, as an Ethiopian, for example, we use a little bit charger uh, ratio. Generally, we, we brew as a 1.16 one for, a, for, a, for example, a, a, a washed coffee. And we, I mean, a little bit use less for a natural. I mean, if we serve a drink of 160 ml in general. So for uh, 10 grams of uh, an Ethiopian, it should be nice. If we use a Brazilian one, we should go lower to eight grams or nine grams. That depends. Most, most of that depends on which processing. But generally, we arrive on 10, 10. If it's a geisha, probably we would like to extract more flavors. We gave the, uh, 11, 12. Obviously, the grinding is the grind, the grind is a matter. So you, of need, course. you need to take care about that. Some coffees use a particular grind set. Other coffees use another grind set. We do not, we try obviously to have a profile on each coffee because uh, if I grind a, a Kenyan coffee as I grind uh, a Brazilian coffee, the result of grinding powder is totally different. Correct. I also, to finish your sentence and answer, uh, Nabin, really the best answer is as long as your coffee tastes good to you and how you want it to serve it to your customer that's the best recipe because coffee changes by the by the hour the minute you open the bag uh, some batches are not consistent in the roasting some beans are broken cracked and ultimately 
as long as your customer and yourself enjoy the coffee together, that's your number one. And, you know, obviously there's all the science, the water, uh, how clean is your equipment, the ratio. But Alberto's answer is spot on as far as grammages go. Now, Instagram is going to shut down the live in a few minutes because it's 60 yeah. minutes. Um, I got more questions for you, but you, you're running a shop, so it's up to you. Yeah. We can keep going, no problem, but you uh, tell me. <laughs> yes, I, I, I have to start to, to, to delivering. Because you need to deliver it. So, yes, the guy is the person right now in, in a minute. I'm, I'm that's fine. I'm fortunate because I set all the orders yesterday, most of them. That's so fine. I I've asked you just in but case. I have, I have a, a roaster that called me. <laughs> I know. Uh, then I skip all the way to the last question for the customers, yeah, sure. for the followers we were watching. What's next on Alberto's planet? Aside from COVID-19, let's remove that from the picture. What's next okay. for you? And you got about 60 seconds. <laughs> What's next for me? I mean, what, what, I, what will change in me? What's next for you? What, what do you see in the future for you? What's your big dream plans? My big dream is to take uh, the advantage of this situation and to reflect this situation in our life. What it means, it means that we must, Italian, because I'm, I'm Italian, take care about our time. We must take care about spending in the right place with the right tools and with the right combination of knowledge and dedication. The other times is dedicated to our who do not mix them. Because the most, the most, the biggest mistakes that we do, the baristas does, is that to do not mix mixing the life with your life and 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 the work's life. So take your time. Now you have it. Considering the most important things, and obviously run the best ideas for your coffee shops, because now is the moment to change. Obviously, it's not necessary to invest the big money. As I told of the very first question, social media, uh, let, let you help from, uh, from the professionist as Mirko or as other professionists. Because just doing simple stuff and short stuff is a, is a, is a great step for your, for your future. And for my future, I hope to really, really use better my time. That's beautiful. Uh, it really is. And uh, I... I think it's something that we give for granted. I think a lot of people give time for granted and family for granted and our friends and who's not. And uh, this is a good time of self-reflection. And yes, look, a lot of people have lost their jobs and their business, but they still have their loved ones because lucky health is on their side. So that's not one, 100%. And you know what? Have fun and as much as with social media, same with your coffee, experiment, and that's what you were trying to say. All those little ideas that you had in the past, just test them. It's okay. People will not expect to be perfect. Maybe it's a new that's coffee it. drink. Maybe it's a new coffee roasting style. Especially in this situation. Especially in this. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I we'll miss you, my friend. Mi manchi, mi <laughs> <laughs> Look, we should have done this without the virus. Yes. Yeah, so I know. Let's make you here a promise that in a month or two or three, when you reopen, you give us a tour. Or maybe we do a live stream during yeah. service. Maybe we can give people an experience of what does it mean a coffee shop, especially a coffee shop in Italy, how does it feel? And we just run yeah. freely without interview. And we can see each other, talk to each other more, so that next time we Yo see sir. each other, it's like if it's been only a few weeks. All right. Got it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for investing this hour with us, sharing your knowledge. Really appreciate to having you here. And sorry for the girls of before. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, but, I, but I wrote, I read now, I'm sorry. I just want to order an espresso. That's okay. <laughs> It's all about espresso. We get it. <laughs> we are Italian. <laughs> we are Italian. Okay, Alberto. Ciao, bello. Ciao, take ragazzi. Care. Ciao a tutti. Look after yourself. Yeah, ciao, take bello. care, my friend. Love you. You too. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. ciao.
there you have it, guys. We got 12 seconds to wrap it up. 10 seconds. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I might do a stories to thank you all. Uh, it was uh, incredible to have uh, Alberto here today.